Okay, welcome everybody to Go in 5 Minutes, Episode 2. Today we're going to talk about debugging. And uh, this is actually a uh, topic that has been requested by quite a few people on our issues page right here. If you have new ideas that you'd like to be covered, just head on over there and submit them. And if you see one that's already there, just go ahead and make a comment, a little plus one comment, and uh, I can see who's really interested in the topics, and if there's enough interest, I'll cover it. So let's get right to it. In the community, there are three major debugging tools, uh, both GDB and Delve, right here and here. Those are runtime debuggers, so they can attach to an existing Go, a running Go program. And there's GoDebug, which we're going to talk about today. So GoDebug is, has a pre-processing stage, which adds some code into your code and then runs it. And that code that it adds enables the debugging process. Uh, that pre-processing stage is what GoDebug calls code instrumentation. So let's get right to it. Here's the code that we're going to run. And essentially what this code does is it runs HTTP GET requests in, uh, in an individual Go routine for each URL. And then it sends on a channel the duration, the amount of time that it took to run that GET request. So we've got our for loop here, which ske schedules each of the Go routines. And then we've got a collection stage here, which ranges through that channel that's being sent back on, and uh, eventually it just prints out the value of each duration and the URL that corresponds to that duration. And you can see here on line 40 and line 54, those two lines are telling the Go debug preprocessor to replace them with the uh, actual code that GoDebug needs to establish those breakpoints, figure out what's the context, or otherwise known as what code is surrounding that breakpoint, and also capturing the values of the various variables that are near that breakpoint, so that you can actually inspect where you are in the debugging session. So it's very simple to run this. If we go to the terminal, we just type go debug run and then our code. And once we press enter, it's going to do the pre-processing. It's going to compile the newly pre-processed code. And then it's going to get right to starting the code. And now we are at the point where we've hit our first breakpoint. So we can hit L. That's figuring out where we are. Uh, now that we know where we are in the code, we can print out variables just by using a P command. So we can see we're on the google.com variable, the google.com URL. And as we know from the code, we're just about to schedule that Go routine to make the GET request. So we can continue. Now again, we're on the next iteration. Now we're on Yahoo. Now we're on Bing. Now we're on DuckDuckGo. And that's the last URL. And in the background, of course, those Go routines are executing or have already executed. So now, since DuckDuckGo.com was the last one, once we press C, we're going to jump down to the breakpoint uh, in the collection stage. And if we go back to the code real quick, we can see that's here on line 54. So we're going to press C, go down and hit L again. Now we're at that first breakpoint in the collection stage. So we can print out the time. So we can see that is the result for Google.com, and we can get a, uh, a little bit of a better understanding of what that duration is by calling its string method. So that was about three seconds to do the get on google.com. Continue on to the next one. And let's list. So now we're at uh, yahoo.com. Continuing on. That was bing.com. duckduckgo.com. And then, of course, we're done. And that's all there is to it. So I would encourage you to go in and check out your code. Uh, there's a lot more to what uh, GoDebug can do. So you can go into your code, and it's very easy to just set a couple breakpoints, just a one-liner, put a couple breakpoints in your code, and uh, run your program under GoDebug. This can also be done in your tests, just by putting a GoDebug test command into your terminal. And you can see how your code behaves. Uh, and especially with concurrent code, you can see how your code behaves under different timing scenarios because when you hit a breakpoint, as we saw in this example, the Go routine here that was scheduled on line 42 is still executing in the background. So it can be a very useful tool not only to uh, test out or see the context of your code as you step through it, 
but it also can be a good tool to see what happens when your code is, uh, when one of your Go routines at least was stopped at a breakpoint. So that's all for today. Uh, and again, I'd, I'd encourage you to go check out this issues page, uh, and submit new issues or vote on existing ones. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. And thanks again. See you next time.